I've always really enjoyed playing Control in TCGs. In Star Wars Unlimited so far, we've had a few strong Control decks like Iden and Krennic, but on the whole the meta has been completely dominated by aggro and midrange. That's understandable, we don't have that many cards, we don't have that many control cards, we can't put together an optimised control list. And then we come to Palpatine. Palpatine has obviously been built as a control leader. He comes down the latest of all the leaders in the game on turn 7. His stats and his unit ability are extremely powerful, obviously making use of them requires getting to the late game, surviving that long and being able to bring him in as a unit. For those reasons so far Palpatine has been a bit of a tier 2 leader. He sees fringe play but he's been kept in check by some really strong aggro decks and probably most of all by Boba Fett. So let's try and build a working control deck with Palpatine and talk through how to play it optimally. Every card in the deck I'm about to show you is either there to get you to the late game or it's there to finish off your opponent once you make it that far. To me this is the purest essence of a late game control deck that we've had in Star Wars Unlimited so far. It's not perfectly tuned and you will need to add and remove cards depending on what's in your local meta but I think this is perfectly capable of winning games against any of the meta decks, if piloted correctly. So in this video, I'm going to talk through card by card, then go through a general analysis of the playstyle. Things you want to be doing, things you shouldn't be doing, how to do your mulligans in certain matchups, and then we'll finish with a few games on force table. Let's start with the card by card analysis. And just before I start this, a quick disclaimer. As we've all been playing the game a bit longer now, and we're getting used to these cards, not all of them will require an in-depth analysis of why we're using them. Some, like Viper Probe Joy, for example, are pretty self-explanatory by this point. Having said that, where a card specifically synergizes well with Palpatine or with another card in the deck, I will try and go a bit deeper on those ones. So up first we've got the ground units, starting with Admiral Piet. Piet is a nice sticky 2-drop with a good amount of health. By sticky I mean he's likely to stick around if you play him in the early game. He's also good later in the game as he just gives you more board control. With this deck you're likely going to be having a lot of card advantage and Piet allows your cards to essentially do something from hand when played. He's sudden. Viper Probe Droid. Not much to say here, it's a 3-2 for 2 with an upside. Specifically with Palpatine you get a little bit more information about what your opponent is holding. It can let you decide which removal to hang on to and which to resource. Don't sleep on the information that you get and try not to forget what they have in hand. Cell Block Guard. This is stall in unit form basically. Think of it like 3 cost, 3 power removal, but it can soak bigger attacks if your opponent just has no way of getting through it. It also feels great to put one of these down with Darth Vader. Not much more to say about this really. Death Trooper. This is such a good card. I like to think of it as a 3-1 that deals 2 damage to an opponent's ground unit, because most of the time you're going to be pinging the Death Trooper itself. There are a few exceptions of course, like sometimes it's beneficial to ping a super laser tech to get the extra resource, but most of the time I think you're going to be doing the damage to itself. Emperor's Royal Guard. This card is one of the reasons to run the deck. I know it seems fairly unassuming, but if you think about it, when played alongside Palpatine, this unit has the stats of the best 3 cost card in the game, Boba Fett, and it can in certain situations have Sentinel. Also, you can technically have 3 of these on the field at once, which obviously is not going to happen very often, but you can't actually do that with Boba Fett because he's unique. And lastly, this card comes out with Darth Vader, which feels really good. It's just such a strong card, playing Piet on 1 into this on turn 2, and trading with your opponent puts you really far ahead straight away. It also, a side note, just feels really thematic, and I love it when cards do that. Super Laser Tech, not much to say about Super Laser Tech, other than there's a specific interaction with, with Palpatine. You can, in a pinch if you need to, you can ping him on turn three and draw a card, and he can rush into things on turn two if Piet survives and you played him on turn one. So there's a few specific interactions, but otherwise it's the card that we all know and love or hate depending on which deck you're playing. Darth Vader. So one of the mainstays of your late game plan, bringing him down then playing Cell Block Guard or Emperor's Royal Guard in the late game feels great. We all know about Vader, it's the most expensive card in the game like monetarily and it's one of the best cards in the game so it's expensive for a reason. Uh, Reinforcement Walker. So most of the time in late game control decks, uh, cards like this, expensive cards, massive cards, they need to do something on the turn they come down in order to justify playing them. This one really does that. It's a big beefy boy who heals you the moment he comes down. Then once he's down, if he gets to stick around and he gets to attack again, he does it again basically. And with 8 health, it's quite likely that he will stick around, unless your opponent has Vanquish. Now let's discuss the space units, starting with Inferno 4. I've gone back and forth about this card. For quite a while I was quite cold on it, but lately I've come to realise that it has reasonable stats for its cost, and that its ability is actually quite useful. It's like a really soft form of tutoring, especially with Palpatine where we can draw with his ability being able to see if that draw is actually useful for the situation we're in, and possibly rectifying that before we use his ability, is quite strong. 
We also just don't have many options when it comes to cheap space units in this deck with the colours that we're using, blue villain and green villain, so there's that as well. So in a nutshell, it isn't one of the best cards in the deck, but I think it does have a place. System Control Craft. So I'm running this as a two of, just because I don't think it's that good. I'm actually not sure it should be in the deck. It's just in here to try and help slow down the space arena, especially if our opponent's running away with that. The four health means a seven feet defender needs to trade into it twice to get rid of it as well, so that's good enough. Avenger. Another space unit I'm running as a two of. This is one of our late game finishers, and it has that thing I talked about earlier, where it does something as soon as it comes down, which is basically power of the dark side on a stick. And it does that every time it attacks, which means your opponent can't really afford to leave this up once it's down, unless they can just kill you on that turn, which is quite possible. You're not always going to get to play this, or our next card, but when you do, it's often game winning. And that next card is Devastator. It's very similar to Avenger, but arguably even more powerful, and therefore a bit more expensive. It's the ultimate late game bomb. I love this card, but it is really expensive to play. If you do manage to play this one, you're probably going to be winning the game. It's in the deck as a one of. Against Control, you might want to make that two of. And against Aggro, you probably want to take out entirely, in favour of a third make an opening, which we're going to come on to in a minute. Now onto the events. I am your father. So I'm not 100% convinced about this card, but it can in theory take down a Bobber Leader. In that instance, I think your opponent is more likely going to let you draw three, but drawing three and the card advantages that you gain from that should not be underestimated, especially in this deck where we play a lot of removal. So just giving yourself more options on later turns can be quite strong. So in that way, we can see this card either as seven damage removal for three resources, which is great, or draw three for three resources, which is great. So either way, it's one of the most efficient cards for its cost in the game. So in a way, we can't really not include it, right? Like, why aren't people playing this more? Make an opening. Heal 2 in control is just always nice. You can kill crafty smugglers and 7th fleet defenders without dealing with their shields. And you can also use it to whittle down something for other removal, or just to put damage on something before deploying Palpatine and stealing it. All around, just a good control removal card. Power of the Dark Side. This one I think is one of my favourite pieces of removal in the game. If you time it right, this card can be game winning. Killing an opponent's leader with this is just such a huge tempo swing, because it's so cheap. That said, I think it's important not to get too greedy with it. If you're facing down two units, it's still worth it to remove 50% of the opponent's board presence. You don't have to be waiting to take down something massive, but if there are ways to thread it together, the fact that it can kill anything is obviously very strong. Resupply, ramp, nothing more to be said here. Take down, solid removal, can remove anything, especially if you work it with a bit of extra damage. Not much more to say about this. Overwhelming Barrage, one of the best pieces of removal in the game. Again, I've talked about this one before, not much more to say. And Vanquish, the same as the above. Super Laser Blast. This card is obviously very slow, but it is kind of our get out of jail free card. Very few cards in the game can deal direct damage to the base from hand, so if you can completely clear the board near the end of the game, it can be really hard for your opponent to completely reload it again. And so this is one of the ways that we win basically, which we'll go into in a minute when we do a sort of general overview of the playstyle. Traitorous. This is another card I've come around on in a big way. Um, the resource swing from this can be huge. It's effectively removal and deployment rolled up into one. The downside is obviously you're paying five to play a three cost essentially. But the fact that you're removing something from your opponent's board more than makes up for that cost. So really good, really strong. You can take over a unit, Bobber. Now let's just quickly go through a general rundown of how the game should play out with this deck. So in the early game, we're going to be playing down our small things like my Probe Droid, Death Trooper, Empress Royal Guard, and Piet. And then looking to ramp with Super Laser Tech and Resupply. Basically prioritizing removal over everything else because we just want to preserve our base life total. That's why we're playing the 30 health base instead of the 25 health base because we just want to drag the game out as long as possible. And then once we get to the end game, we want to be using our big mass removal, overwhelming barrage, super laser blast to clear the board. Hopefully the, the opponent can't then reload the board. And then we're playing down the massive late game bombs. Reinforcement Walker, Avenger, Devastator, Darth Vader. And through that, we should hopefully have enough to win the game. And deploying Emperor Palpatine obviously is very strong. So that's, that's a general sort of outline of how the deck should play. Obviously, that's just in theory. And in real life, you know, things happen and you have to adapt. Um, but you'll see some of that in, in the games that I'm going to show on Force Table. So let's now go over a few mulligans. So this is pretty good opening hand actually. Um, we have we have two different one drops that we can play, or two drops, sorry, we can play on turn one. And we have two different follow-ups, well, two different options for follow-ups. We have Death Trooper and Emperor's Royal Guard. Um, if I were, I'd probably keep this hand actually, to be honest. And I would resource Darth Vader and one of the Royal Guards. 
um, just so that we can have different options based on what our opponent plays on turn one. For example, if the opponent were to play down Greedo, uh, I would then keep, I would play Death Trooper on turn two to ping it off, basically. Um, whereas if the opponent was to play something in space, for example, I would probably then more go for the Royal Guard line because I know it's protected more. Um, Five Probe Droid and Inferno 4 are both very valid turn one plays. The only thing I would say is they're both more valuable later on, really. Um, but on turn one, Inferno 4 probably just takes takes it a little bit, just because being able to curve out nicely in the early game is very important. So if we see that we're going to draw something like Devastator or Avenger on turn two, we can then just push that to the bottom of the deck. So I'd probably... My, my my turn one would probably be Inferno 4, and then my turn two would be based on what the opponent does, but it would either be Emperor's Royal Guard or Death Trooper. Okay, let's try that again. Mulligan. Okay, yeah, this is another pretty good draw, to be honest. So, in this instance, I'd be keeping this hand, obviously, and I'd be getting rid of one Piet and one Cyborg Guard. Or we could probably get rid of... Actually, I take that back. I'd get rid of Vader and one Piet because we don't need two of those, but we can keep two Cyborg Guards. So then, I mean, obviously we only have one turn one play, which is Piet, but that's a really good turn one play. He'll he'll likely stick around with full health. It's very unlikely that he'll die. And then we can play um, either Death Trooper or Cyborg Guard on turn two, probably Death Trooper um, to clear out our opponent's board. Should we do one more? Oh. This is a hand, um, it's actually, it's, it's not as bad as it looks, to be honest. If I had to keep this hand, if this was a mulligan, for example, what I would do is I'd get rid of Super Laser Blast, obviously it's far too late, and then I would probably get rid of one of the Power of the Dark Sides, and to Viper, Viper Probe draw her on turn one, and then hope that I draw something strong on turn two, but if I don't, Power of the Dark Side is a very valid turn to play, because your opponent likely won't have played that much by that point. Okay, so now we're just going to go through a game on Force Table to kind of show you how the deck works and just how it plays out, really. So straight out of the gate, uh, this this is an okay opening hand, I would say. Um, obviously we have two big late game cards that we can get rid of, so that's quite straightforward. We don't have anything to play on turn one, but I would say that the, the turn two cards that we have are obviously our three best turn two options, so I think let's give it a go. Um, let's see what happens. I'm going to get rid of these two, obviously, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I can't play anything, so I'm just going to take the initiative. Okay, so we've got lots lots of options here. Um, I think we'll get rid of a Death Trooper just because it's a duplicate at this point. Not that useful. And I think, for now, I think we're just going to play the Royal Guard, just because it trades really well into this. Season straw cheaper. Okay, they're playing surprise strike, so that's fine. And we'll take the initiative. I'm playing down Greedo. Okay. I think we might actually keep Darth Vader at this point. I know it's quite early in the game, but so. I think to start off with, we're just going to trade with that Shore Trooper to get rid of it. Because there is a risk with Greedo that he can trade and then use an event and kill this in one go. And then I think we will play down our own Super Laser Tech. So, and he's not able to ping away our Super Laser Tech. So now we have to decide whether we. I mean, they have two resources left and two cards, so they might still have another card in hand. I think we don't want to give them this super laser tech because then they can bring in Bobber on this turn. So I'm not going to ping my own away, actually, to be honest. So I'm going to claim the initiative. 
and then they have another season shortly, but that's okay. Okie dokie, I think the hand information, I think we're probably going to get rid of the Viper Pro Joy at this point. And we will play down Overwhelming Barrage and get rid of both of these. He's going to be able to bring in Bobber anyway, so the resource doesn't matter. So three and one. He brings in Bobber and we're just going to trade. Uh, sorry, attack the base. And claim initiative. And he plays Doug Greedo, that's fine. And cut our space there. Okay. So that is a bit annoying because we can't now play Power of the Dark Side. But we will be able to bring in Darth Vader this round, so... And probably Emperor Palpatine as well. So I think we'll get rid of one of the Vaders. So let's get rid of that Greedo to start with. Yes. We're going to sell block guard. Yes. And we'll attack Boba Fett for five. And we'll claim the initiative. We weren't able to get in Palpatine on this round, but that's fine. Okay, this is going to be very strong. So at this point, we're kind of at a point in the game where resupply isn't that useful anymore. So I'm going to resource that. So look at the card advantage that we've got at this point of the game. We have five cards in hand. They have two. So I'm going to make a weird play. Hmm. I'm going to kill off that Bobber. We're going to steal their Vader, basically. So if he doesn't attack with Vader on this round, that would be very good. But he looks like he might be, yeah. Okay, ouch. So, we're gonna bring in Palpatine. And we're not gonna let him attack with that other cartel spacer. Okie dokie. And we don't want it to take that much more damage, so we'll play Power of the Dark Side. We'll get rid of Super Laser Tech, because at this point in the game we don't need the ramp. So this is a bit scary now, but we do have an answer for that. So this play looks a little bit weird, but I have to do this to survive basically. So this is what I talked about earlier in the video where a lot of decks don't have the ability to do damage to the base from hand. 
So I'm not going to resource. In fact, let's give it a see. Uh, super laser tech, that's fine. So there's nothing he can do from hand right now. And he can't attack with the units that come in this turn. And so I think let's just add it up. Yeah, I think we've got exact lethal, so. Unless he's got some removal, we've win. So. And that's game. So welcome to game two of my force table demonstration for the Palpatine deck. So let's take a look at the first hand. This is quite a reasonable opening hand. We have a turn one play and we have several turn two plays. And we do have some good removal in the form of takedown. So I don't think we'll mulligan this. In terms of what to get rid of, I think I am your father kind of stands out in this because we're not looking early on to get rid of any really high health units on the other side. And then we kind of have to make a decision between Death Trooper and Cell Block Guard. And I think coming out as a just 3-3 three, three with Sentinel, it's not as strong, so we'll get rid of that. Let's have a look and see what he's playing. So Force Throw, Death Star, Storm Trooper, Resupply, and Scepter. Okay, so he also has access to ramp as well. And we know this Death Star Storm Trooper is coming down, which is perfect for our Death Trooper on turn two. Excellent. Take the initiative. Let's see what we get on turn two. Okay, we're putting down that walker because it's far too expensive. I'm just gonna straight away ping away this stormtrooper. Okay, force choke. I mean, that's <laughs> sometimes the AI is quite stupid. That was ridiculous. Um, and I'll just claim initiative. Okay, I'm not at a point yet where I'm keeping big late game things, so get rid of Avenger. And I think we will play down Emperor's Royal Guard. And claim the initiative. Oh, that's a bit scary. But we do have takedown for that, so that's good. And at this point, I think Cell Block Guard. So we can't let him get that off, to be honest. Okay, and we'll do three damage to the base. And we'll claim initiative. So I actually think, well, we don't need two Inferno Fours. I was going to say Super Laser Blast, but we can only play one of them anyway, so we'll get rid of that. I think at this point I'm going to play Resupply into another Emperor's Royal Guard. It's just such a strong card. He sees our hand. We're going to... Attack the base. And next turn when we deploy Palpatine, these get Sentinel as well, so. So at this point now, I'll keep Reinforcement Walker. Um, Overwhelmed Barrage is pretty good. I actually think because we've got board advantage, I don't want to keep Super Laser Blast anymore. Can't see us falling behind on board. We've got a pretty commanding lead, to be honest. But what I can see me playing actually is Overwhelming Barrage on this one to try and keep it around a bit longer. Two, actually we need to do three, two. Okay, I don't care about that.
Interestingly, there is an argument to be made for me hanging on. I mean, he's deploying Darth Vader, but um, I should have hung on really and waited to see if I needed to damage a unit because then I can take it over with Palpatine. Because his ability when he deploys is to take control of a damaged non lethal unit. So that can be massive things. It could be a reinforcement walk or something like that. Um, so now that Darth Vader's come down, he could swing for five. But what I can do is deploy Palpatine. And then these suddenly gain Sentinel, so he has to attack into one of these. And because I overwhelming barrage uh, the buff that I put onto it, I put onto the damaged one, so it made it a bit more awkward for him actually in the end. Um, don't pass on that, I don't want to kill my own unit. So he's taking the initiative. So at this point, I can, I am your father. And yeah, he lets me draw the cards. So that just gives me overwhelming card advantage at this point of the game. Two overwhelming barrages. <laughs> um, let's get rid of Super Laser Tech. Open fire, okay. That's fine. We'll get rid of your Vader. Um, if only we had one more resource. <laughs> I think we'll play. I'm trying to think if there's a way to do this. I don't think there is. So we'll just play down the cell block guard. And we'll get rid of your cell block guard. Pass. Um, that's a dead card now. So. Oh, actually, we're one off. <laughs> See what you're holding. Open fire. See what we've got coming up. We'll get rid of those two. Pass. And done. And we'll finish you off with, actually, let's finish you off with Palpatine, Mathematic. Okay. And that's game two. And there you have it. That's um, that's a, a rundown of the deck, the cards that I've chosen, some mulligan advice, and some games on Force Table to go through. This is one of my favorite decks that I've made so far in the game. I really love playing Control, and I think this I, obviously i understand that people prefer playing krennic and Iden, and i think they are probably objectively stronger but for me i just love palpatine and i think it's very thematic playing a controlling palpatine deck who you know is sort of plotting behind the scenes and sort of puppeteering everyone and that kind of thing so yeah i i really enjoyed making this deck and i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching if you made it this far please consider subscribing um, i have a lot more content planned thank you very much thanks for watching Bye bye